In this session, I'm going to focus on the slope that is generated after moderation analysis. Now, for example, I've got a categorical moderator that is moderating the relationship between, let's say, organizational commitment and collaborative culture. And then I've got another relationship that is being moderated by another categorical moderator, public and private sector banks. And the relationship that is being moderated is POS and collaborative culture. Now, similar to this, I've got a continuous moderator. So the slope for continuous moderator is here. Now I've got two examples here. Again, a moderator that strengthens the relationship, a moderator that dampens or weakens the relationship. Now you can get these Excel sheets through these websites by Jeremy Dawson. And this is stats tool package by James Gaskin. The links will be shared in the description. Now for the first interpretation, I've got this two way with binary moderator. In this example, my moderator is type of bank. So a bank could be public sector bank or it could be a private sector bank. Now in this example, what I've done is my independent variable is perceived organizational support. My moderator with zero value is public and with one is private. Now, if you've got categorical moderators, obviously you need to identify their values with zero and one. Now, if you've got more than three categories, you will create dummy variables. The next thing is you enter the data here, the path coefficients, that is your, the impact of independent variable on your dependent variable. So this is the path coefficient for that relationship. The impact of moderator on dependent variable, this is the path coefficient for that relationship. And this is your interaction effect. Now, once these effects are added, you will have this graph. Now, in order to interpret this slope, what you need to do is you need to look into the steepness of gradient. Which of these two gradients is steeper? If you look here, this line here, this is much steeper in comparison to this dotted line here. This is less steeper. If you look here, this is higher. And this is much straighter than this in comparison to this line here. And this line shows public sector banks. Now in public sector banks, if you increase perceived organizational support, there is an increase in collaborative culture, which is your dependent variable. And this increase in public sector banks is much higher in comparison to private sector banks. Look at this. In private sector banks, you are increasing perceived organizational support, but look at this, look at the increase. It's not that steep. So the way Perceived organizational support impacts collaborative culture in public sector banks is different in comparison to private sector banks. Now let's do this with another example. Now I've got the same moderator type of bank and look at the steepness. Which one is steeper? This dotted one is much steeper in comparison to this straight one. Now this dotted one is for private sector banks. Now in private sector banks, if you increase organizational commitment, there is a higher change in collaborative culture in comparison to public sector banks. Now here in public sector banks, this line here, you are increasing organizational commitment, but look at the increase in collaborative culture. This is not the same as the one we just have in private sector banks. The increase is much higher in private sector banks in comparison to public sector banks. Now, this is how you can use this slope analysis file from Jeremy Dawson to perform moderation or slope analysis for categorical moderator. Again, the values remain the same as you get them from either Smart PLS, Amos or any other software. It doesn't matter. You will have these values 
You just need to know where are these values and you don't normally have them in smart PLS. You have them in path coefficients. In the results, in AMOS, you've got in estimates. So you just simply paste the, those values from the software here and you'll get this slope. And this is how you interpret it. Now the next example is, for example, I've got a continuous moderator. Now for the continuous moderator, again, still you will have your IV, your moderator, and your DB. That's it. Next thing, you still have to put in the path coefficient that is the impact of IV. And in this case, our IV is IM. So the impact of IM on dependent variable OP. So what's the path coefficient? You will put it here. Same for the moderator. What is your moderator RS? So the impact of RS on OP. What is the path coefficient? You will put it here. Interaction. The interaction effect of IM into RS to OP. What's the path coefficient? You will put it here. And you will have this slope here. Now, how do we interpret it? Look at the steepness of gradient. Step one. Look at the steepness of gradient. Which line is steeper? This line is steeper in comparison to this red line. The red line means high roll stress. And the blue line means low roll stress. So this means that at low roll stress, if you increase internal marketing, there is a higher level of organizational performance achieved. However, in case of high roll stress, although you are increasing internal marketing practices, look at the increase in IM. It's not the same as you had when you had low roll stress. So at low, low level of roll stress, the impact of IM on OP is much stronger. This means RS is dampening the positive relationship between IM and OP. Why? Because at low roll stress, the impact is much stronger. However, when you keep on increasing the roll stress, although you are increasing the internal marketing practices, but it is not reflecting on the organizational performance. So this shows that RS roll stress dampens the positive relationship between IM and OP. Now another example. Now in this example, I've got internal marketing as my IV, ISQ as my DV and EL as my moderator. Let's simply draw it IM, ISQ and the moderator is EL. So entrepreneurial leadership moderates the relationship between IM and ISQ. Now, statistically, you can draw it like this. IM, EL, IM into EL. Now IM to ISQ, here is your path coefficient. EL to ISQ. Here is your path coefficient, the moderator to the dependent variable, and here is your interaction path coefficient here. Now look at the steepness of gradient. Which one is steeper? Here, this one is steeper, the red line. Now, when you increase your entrepreneurial leadership within the organization, the positive impact, that is the relationship between IM and ISQ, which is presumed to be positive, this gains further strength. So at low EL, although the relationship is positive, although you are increasing IM, that is improving the internal marketing practices, and yes, it is increasing ISQ. Look at this. With an increase in IM, there is an increase in ISQ. This means an increase here. However, when you improve your entrepreneurial leadership characteristics, then if you increase your IM, look at this, the line is much steeper. Look at this, how upward it is, how steeper it is. This is much straighter at low entrepreneurial leadership. So this means that when you improve entrepreneurial leadership characteristics within the organization, 
the impact of IM on ISQ is further strengthened. So EL is actually strengthening the positive relationship between IM and ISQ. And finally, how do you report it? Although I've done a video on this, but quickly let's go back as well. So what you need is, you need R square value, you need path coefficients, you need F square. So if there is no F square from the software, you can simply calculate it based on this formula. R square included with the inclusion of the moderating effect. R square excluded without the moderating effect. And this will give you F square, which means with regard to the interaction effect, the F square effect size indicates how much the moderation contributes to the explanation of the endogenous construct. So how much is your moderating effect contributing in explaining the endogenous construct with and without the moderating effect? Now moving on. And finally, you do the slope analysis as well. And let's go down. Again, the first thing that you do is write your hypothesis for moderation. Roll stress negatively moderates the positive relationship between IM and ISQ such that now you have to explain how it moderates. That is, roll stress weakens the relationship between IM and ISQ. And then you have to ex briefly explain your hypothesis provide without the inclusion of moderating effect, that is the interaction effect, this was your R square. And with the inclusion of moderating effect, this is your R square. And there is a change. Now further, you explain or write in the significance of moderating effect, that is your interaction effect. And was it significant? Yes, it is significant. So your hypothesis is supported. And then obviously you present the results as well. Now further, what you do is you present your slope analysis. Again, how do you write about slope analysis? Let's quickly go through that. Further, the slope analysis is presented to better understand the nature of moderating effect. That is figure one. As shown in the figure, now you can have these figures from these Excel sheets here. Just copy them and paste it onto your Word document. Just simply click here, copy or press Ctrl C and put it in the document here, like this. The line is much steeper for low roll stress. That is when you have low roll stress, this shows that low level of roll stress, the impact of IM on SQ is much stronger in comparison to high RS. However, at higher roll stress, the line tends to straighten. This shows that higher roll stress the increase in IM does not lead to similar change in ISQ. So although you are increasing internal marketing practices within the organization, this is not leading to a similar change in ISQ because you've got high role stress. However, if you've got low role stress and you increase your internal marketing practices, this leads to a more stronger change in internal service quality. In conclusion, Higher role ambiguity weakens the impact of IM on ISQ. This is your F square effect size that was calculated based on that formula. And according to Cohen, moderating effect does not contribute significantly in explaining the endogenous construct because this is weak. So although your moderating effect is not contributing in endogenous construct, the moderation effect is significant although the effect size is weak. But this, this does not mean that your relationship or moderating effect is insignificant. It is weak, but significant. How do you report it? Again, you can have your table with your interaction effect, your beta value, your standard error, T value and P value. Again, the other relationships in the model. And finally, your slope that you have already reported in the text. I hope this session would have helped you understand how to interpret the slope and how to report it with moderation results. Thank you very much.